Hello again, everybody. It's Plowboy, Plowboy's Ghost Channel. Uh, today, I'll show you this uh, infield a little bit closer. About uh, two years ago, roughly, give or take a few months, I did a video on shooting this out in the driveway, but we never did talk about it or anything. And it's kind of weird because this is probably my favorite of all of my muzzleloader long guns. This is a Pedersoli P53 infield. Uh, see, it's got the cartouche on the end of it there, kind of like a original wood. It's got all the good, correct markings. If you take away the little bitty Pedersoli emblem over here. But uh, 577 caliber, patterned after the P53 infield, uh, three bandit uh, rifle musket. They called it a rifle musket in the uh, early literature, so I'm calling it that now. Uh, the little uh, booklet that come out with it. They call it uh, Companion to the New Rifle Musket. Not rifled musket, but rifle musket. So that's what I refer to it as, rifle musket. Of course it's rifled, but 39 inch barrel, 55 inch over all length. It's you know, pretty pretty tall. If you put a bayonet on it, it'll be about as tall as me or a little over my head. I don't have the bayonet for it. Uh, I didn't reenact infantry. I reenacted mounted cavalry, so I didn't use a three band. I had a two band infield back when I reenacted in the late 90s, early 2000s. And then I changed over to a Sharps carbine, paper Sharps carbine. And this, I wanted I wanted a three band infield anyway. Of course, I have the JP Murray carbine to strap across my back if I ever reenact cavalry again. And, and I hope to one day before I'm 90. Or at least 93. I'm shooting for 92, but we'll see. Anyhow, uh, y'all saw me make up the cartridges for this the other day, so I thought that I would uh, load a few of them. And I think you're on camera there. So anyway, I'm uh, what I'm wearing. I've had for almost exactly 20 years this year, this month. Uh, back when I reenacted, you know, like I was talking about way back when. Um, I bought this stuff, and, well, with the exception of what's on my belt. The shirt and the pants and the brogans that you can't see with spurs on them. I've had since 1998, bought them all new at the Blockade Runner in their old store at uh, in War Trace, Tennessee. So anyway, as you can see, I tore the cartridge open on the powder end, and I'm going to attempt to pour the powder down it. And we didn't have a blooper so far, I can't believe it. Once all the powder's out, take the end with a bullet that's facing this way, it's lubed. Push it down to about the top of where the lube is. And you tear off the remainder, throw it on the ground, give your wife something to be happy about. All that paper. Then you push her on down the board, making sure I was doing right. <laughs> Got it good, firmly seated. And that's 68 grains, if you saw the... Uh, the uh, cartridge making video. That's 68 grains of uh, Go X3F that I'm using. And if I remember which side my cap pouch is on, I'm going to go ahead and get a cap. Put it on. Now we're ready to fire. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm having to go by where I've drawn lines. I tested this out so maybe y'all can see me. Anyway, put a round or two through it. And see if I can hit this box. And the turkey gobbled again. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to break any speed records with my reloading. Just casually talking and doing what I'm doing. This is about to reload speed when you use this style. Once again, not in any hurry. But then again, I'm not getting shot at either, so... So it goes pretty quick for muzzle loader work. And it's ready again. Yeah, when I first when I first got to, took this rifle hunting deer season before last 
on the first morning this gun ever going hunting, I killed a nice buck with it. Well, the biggest bodied, not the biggest rack necessarily, but the biggest bodied buck that I've ever killed with this gun that opening morning. So it's kind of like at 30-30, where I kill one on opening morning my first hunt with it. I kill one on opening morning my first hunt with this one. Kind of feel like it's charmed. I don't know. I had a little bad luck last year with the uh, with that new Flintlock 54 caliber Pedasoli, but that was my own fault, and I'm going to shoot that gun some more before, well, about exactly, a little less than a month now to open, and, uh, open in the morning for muzzleloader season. I'm going to shoot it some more, but if I don't feel confident the night before with that Flintlock, I don't plan on missing two deer in the first three days like I did with that Flintlock last year. Me and Mr. Charmed Enfield are going to go back together. Because it likes putting deer in the back of that Jeep for a little ride. And the turkey gobbled again. <laughs> you know, she told me, she told me that turkey attacks her every time she walks in that uh, pen. And she's wanting to kill it. She's hoping she can wait, wait for another month and or so for uh, Thanksgiving. I don't know if turkey's gonna make it. Between my shooting and giving it a heart attack and her hating it, you know, for the right beer, right whiskey, she might talk me into going over and capping that sucker early. Boy, that's a good seal. And these cartridges, since I'm doing it with lube paper, you know, and it rides paper all the way down, stays paper patched, I should say. It effectively swabs the bore. So you ain't got fouling to worry about. You still gotta clean it, of course, when you're done, just like any other muzzle loader, but shot to shot accuracy, I don't have any problem. And see, every one of these, of course, I'm not shooting that far. But every one of these so far would be a kill, you know, at a standing target that looks sort of cardboardy, cardboardy, just, you know, not shooting me a bird or making me mad or nothing, and really ain't had much whiskey, so we have to factor that in too. Should I drink more and then get on camera? No, because I'll get all the internet YouTube safety commandos after me. Probably got a bunch of them out there right now flipping out because I'm touching the trigger. And I'm touching, look, I'm pulling the trigger. Oh my God. I wonder I'm alive. Not making light of safety, but making light of some people that are completely unreasonable. <laughs> Single action revolvers with nothing under the hammer. If I'm pointed in a safe direction and I'm, I'm by myself out in the middle of nowhere and the gun's not pointed at me, don't worry about if my finger touches the trigger. Just like right now. That sounds a little bit like a rant for another time. There's a video. I'm sure it'll knock some of my subscribers off. Of course, my subscribers probably aren't the one complaining. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do some more uh, shooting with this off camera. The last video I uploaded making those cartridges, it was a 20 something minute video. It honestly took me over 24 hours. I never did get that fast internet. 24 hours to upload that video. I ain't aiming to do that again. I can't run my Roku or and my boys down there trying to watch whatever he watches in his little uh, personal secluded zone in the playroom and my uploads messing with his speed and everything else so I'm gonna kind of keep this abbreviated until we can finally get some faster internet um, anyway uh, if there's anything that that I started to talk about and got uh, derailed or deviated from that you thought was interesting and you want me to go back and touch on it try again let me know comment like if you like please I hope somebody does uh, subscribe if you got nothing better to do I can't afford to pay you much but we'll try to work out something I appreciate it y'all thanks for watching <laughs>